Hello everyone, welcome to another Python tutorial series, and in this video, I'm going to talk about an introduction to Platformer and Yersinet Engine number 3. So in this video, we're going to continue the Yersinet Platformer game, and I'm going to talk about players, traps, and enemies. We already talked about the movement of the player in the previous two videos of this tutorial series, so this video is going to focus more on the creation of traps and enemies, and I hope you like it. So first of all, let's look at the code that we have before. Um, we have this player in the center, and I can move it left to right using the A and B keys. I can also jump and move on to another location. I could jump onto these different levels, and I could just move around like a basic 2D platformer. And now that um, we've seen that, before we start, let's tidy up the code that we've developed so far. And I'll put the duplicate operation under each entity in a for loop. So if we go down in our code, I'm going to delete some of these, some of this code. So delete these two duplicates, delete these duplicates as well, and also delete these, as well as this. And now what I'm going to do is create um, a duplicate loop. I'm going to have an extension variable equal to 1. And this is the number of duplications we want to make on each side of the initial background and settings. For example, when the extension is 1 and the background, um, when the extension is 1, the background and settings would be duplicated one time on each side. If the extension was equal to 2, the duplication will be two times on each side. And the larger this number is, the larger the world of the game. So I have an extension variable. Now I'm going to write a for loop for m in range extension. I'm going to just duplicate it. So duplicate the background. So duplicate the background. Set the x equal to size multiplied by m plus 1. I want to do the same thing, um, duplicate, duplicate, duplicate the background, set the size equal to negative size, multiplied by m plus 1. Now I'm going to copy and paste this, and instead of the background, what I'm going to do is duplicate the ground, and I'm going to do this again, duplicate the wall, so wall, and I'm also going to have, I'm going to increase this by 5.5, so 5.5 plus a size times n plus 1, and here I'm going to increase by 5.5 as well, so 5.5 minus size times n plus 1. And now I'm also going to Duplicate the level, the level, and I'm going to increase by 2, so 2 plus size, and then 2 minus size. And lastly, I'm going to duplicate the ceiling. So ceiling, ceiling, and here I'm going to decrease by 2.5, so minus 2.5. So negative 2.5 plus size, and then negative 2.5 minus size. And so if I run this, we want to make sure that there are no errors. And now that we have cleaned up our code a little bit with a for loop, we see that it's still the same as before, with no errors. So let's close this. And you notice that the player is a green cube. Let's give it a character by adding a texture to it. We'll also change the color uh, to white and set the z coordinate to be negative 0.01. So instead of a cube, I have my player right here. And it's equal to a platformer controller 2D. The y is equal to 1. I'm going to set the z equal to negative 0.01. The scale, the y scale is going to be equal to 1. I'm going to set the color equal to color dot color is equal to color.white and 
I'm going to set the texture equal to an image in my assets folder called guy.png. So if I run this, now we see that the player um, is now a guy and it's a PNG. But when I move my player, you see that there's a small shadow kind of on the side. And that's because the model of the player is a cube, which has six sides. And when we give a texture to the entity, the image shows on each side of the six sides. Now when the player moves, sometimes you can see an image on the other sides, in addition to the front side, depending on the angle of the cube. Uh, we might fi fix this later in the game, um, but in this game, we'll leave it as it is. Now there are gaps on the ground that the player can fall in. Now let's fill the gaps with traps and let's create a trap entity. So underneath ceiling, I'm going to create a trap variable or an entity. And it's equal to an entity. I'm going to set the model equal to a quad. Set the scale equal to two on the x, one on the y. Set the x equal to negative six and the y equal to negative two so the texture equal to an image in my assets folder called trap.png and of course we need to set it equal to a collider and in this case we're going to use a box collider so if i save and run this i have a trap right there and now i can stand on it i can jump and i'll be able to land and I won't fall through. Now, we also need to duplicate the traps when we extend the settings. So again, in this uh, loop, let's duplicate, duplicate the trap. So the x equal to negative 6 plus size times n plus 1. And again, we need to duplicate the trap x is equal to negative 6 minus size multiplied by m plus 1. And so now we'll create enemies. And to do this, we'll create an enemy entity class first. Um, and we're going to be using a ghost image to represent our en en enemies. So at the very top, I'm going to create a class, an enemy class with an entity parameter. Define init of self x and y. I'm going to call super dot init. And I'm going to set self dot model equal to cube self dot texture equal to a ghost image in my assets folder. So assets slash ghost.png and now I need to set oops I'm going to set the color so self.color equal to color.green now we can set the x and y so self.x is equal to x self.y is equal to y and these are the parameters that we entered and these will just represent the coordinates of the enemy so now we want to create an enemy object on the red level. So right right here, let's create an enemy object. Enemy, and this is equal to um, an object of the enemy class. And then we need to enter two parameters, which is the x and y values. In this case, I'll set it to two and one. So if I save and run this, I have an enemy right here, and it's a little green ghost. So now that an enemy has been created, how do I make it move? And to do this, we need to add in the update function. So let's add in the update function uh, outside of our enemy class. So define update. And I also need to create a global variable for speed. And I'm going to have a speed variable, speed is equal to 1. And now in this update function, I want to declare global speed and set enemy.x plus equal to speed multiplied by time.dt. 
So I'm increasing the x value or the x coordinate of the enemy by speed, which is 1, multiplied by time by dt. And this is the time elapsed since the last frame. And we use it to ensure that the code will have the same performance on the computers on computers regardless of the speed. So if I save and run this, now we see that our enemy is able to move to the right. But what we want is for the enemy to repeatedly move to the right and left. And that is, it will turn around after moving a short distance in one direction. So when the ghost was initially on this red level, I want it to move to the right. And then once it reaches the end, I want it to move it to the left. And to do this, we'll create another global variable, dx, and initialize it as 0. So right next to speed, I have dx and set it equal to 0. And in our update function, I'll call global dx. Now dx is going to be the distance the enemy moves in one direction. And the idea is that when the enemy moves two units in one direction, it will turn around and move to the opposite direction. So I will increase the change in x, or dx, by the speed multiplied by time.tt. And I will check if the absolute value of dx is greater than 2, then I'll set speed uh, equal to the negative speed. So I'll multiply it by negative 1, and I'll set dx equal to 0. So if I save and run this, now that we see that our ghost is moving back and forth, but it's a little skewed to the right. And we want it to move back and forth around its initial position. <clears throat> now to do this, all we need to do is subtract 1 in the x-coordinate in our enemy object right here. So instead of setting the x equal to 2, I'll set it equal to 1. And now if I save and run this, now our ghost object is not skewed anymore and it's moving left and right. So now it works. Now we can see the shadow of the enemy as well. And just like the player, um, just like the player, we'll leave this um, as it is in this game. Now let's create another enemy on the ceiling. In doing so, we'll create an enemy list and put, and put both enemies in it. So I have one enemy right here. I'm going to create an enemies list. And what I'm going to do is append that enemy into the list. And now I'm going to have an enemy go to. I'm going to have another enemy object. Set it so the x equal to negative 2.5 minus 1. And 2 for the y. And I'm going to append this into the enemies list. Now we're also going to need to modify the update function to account for multiple enemies. And now instead of only increasing this one enemy, I'm going to create a for loop for enemy and enemies. Now I'm going to increase the x for every single enemy. Now if I save and run this, I have an enemy right here as well as an enemy right there. And I have two of them. And they're both working just as expected. Now, if we wanted to add the enemies to our extended settings, we could use a for loop just as we did for the settings in the background. So if I move to the right right here, we see that we don't have the same enemies to the right or to our left. And now we want to add that. Now, if we go into our for loop where we duplicated it, I'm just going to Let's see, add some space, and then set enemy equal to enemy 2 minus 1 plus size multiplied by m minus 1, 0. So this is an enemy, and um, I'm setting the x and y coordinates for it. Now I'm going to append it into the enemies list. 
And I'll do the same thing. So enemy is equal to enemy, 2 minus 1, minus size, multiplied by n minus 1, 0. And then append this into our enemies list. So this is for basically all of our right levels or right uh, backgrounds. Now I want to do it for my for the extra extension on the left side. So I'll just copy and paste that. And then set this equal to negative 2.5 minus 1 and negative 2.5 minus 1 minus size multiply by n minus 1. And instead I'll set this to 2 and to 2. Or actually, these two on the top are for the enemies on the lower level, and these two are for the enemies on the upper level. So if I save and run this, now we have our enemies right here and right there. And actually, this enemy looks a little low, so I'll change these to 1. And this is just one, uh, the Y coordinate. Of the enemy. So now we see that all the enemies are um, basically where they're supposed to be. So I can jump around and I have enemies all over the place that I can dodge, that I can attack, or whatever. So this is the end of this video. If you have any comments, please put them below at the comment section. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please hit the red button below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.